Romero Johnson, boss of bosses of the Romero family and owner of the new Black Wall Street. I sit up and think about my people more than I think about myself. My people here in the States, my people in all the other countries, and with the biggest focus on my people in the motherland. And I know that there's a lot of people right now who's saying people should put themselves first. Or, I put myself before I put any and everybody. But me, being who I am, and even before I knew who exactly I was to become, I just could never put myself first. It's not in me to put myself first. I deny myself every day about everything in this world. I'm always thinking about ways that my people's livelihoods can be better. How can they be prosperous? How can their lives be easier? How can I get them to stand together as one? How can I make and keep them, their children, and their grandchildren safe? Because I think generations ahead, and not just for today. Many of the ways and things that I come up with are the simplest, but most overlooked ways known to man. But at the same time, I have one hell of an imagination. For example, one of my main focuses will be on my less fortunate people in Africa, mainly villages or homes that are not in villages or not in big cities. I saw a video of one young lady who lived by herself in the motherland. She had her own home, and that's cool. She had her own livestock. And that's cool. She had her own garden area. And that's cool. She had everything that she needed to live. And that's cool. The thing that I didn't like was the fact that it all could be so much better. While at the same time saving the planet. This is what I mean. Her home looked as if it was made of scraps from sheet metal that was just threw together. Needless to say, and there was a gap under her door that would allow rats or snakes to slide under and into her home. I didn't like that. The door didn't lock from the inside. So my mind wouldn't be at ease knowing that someone or something could be standing over me while I was asleep. I didn't like that. Her bathroom was outside, like that old school outhouse that our grandparents used to use down south. Her toilet looked old and barbaric as well. Just a hole cut in a big wooden box to piss or shit in. And again, an unsecured door. Me personally, I would have concerns if someone had to use the bathroom in the middle of the night because they would have to go outside in the dark, especially children. So of course, I didn't like that either. Seeing just that brought me to a vision and a plan to do something about it. My vision and plan is to take discarded plastics of the world that can be melted down and then formed into one inch thick fabricated pre-fit panels that can be assembled into a home at any desired location. I'm talking floors, walls, and roof. So basically, an oversized Barbie house that we'll put together when we get there. I'm thinking we'll create two different style homes, a one bedroom and a three bedroom. All of these homes will be identical to the others, with the kitchen and bathroom of course, and maybe a pantry storage room for consumables. I'm thinking we'll add a plastic table and connecting chairs, also extending from one of the kitchen walls as one piece, or attached to the floor as one piece. Better yet, we could make an indoor plastic kitchen bench that's connected to the middle of the floor as one piece, which gives the occupants more room to sit and eat. I'm thinking attaching eye-level plastic cabinets with sliding doors on one of the walls as one piece. All of the bare rooms will have a bare frame that's connected to one of the walls. And if it's a three bare room, the other two rooms may have twin-sized bunk bed frames attached 
to one of the walls or to two of the walls. They'll also receive mattresses with those frames. I'm thinking that each bedroom will have a plastic dresser that's attached to one of the walls as well. May even add a full size plastic mirror on top of the dresser. I'm thinking operable plastic windows that are inserted into the fabricated walls. They'll be able to be opened and closed. Also adding a locking latch on them. Bathrooms will have the standard toilet, shower, and sink that are all plastic. How about adding electrical outlets to the fabricated walls as well? And set up some solar panels in the vicinity so they can have electricity. I'm thinking that everything in and on the homes when erected could be held in place with half inch screws and preset screw holes with a female receiver in the other wall that is being fastened to. I've seen so many videos of these little sheet metal communities in Africa with paper junk and other debris all along the ground with the people using sheets and blankets as the door to enter or exit the dwellings. I would like to contact those community members and maybe ask if they'd like for me to swap out their old sheet metal homes for my new recycled plastic homes that I'm creating just for them. I also plan on running water and sewage pipes to these homes as well. They'll need workable toilets and sinks too. So we'll probably dig for underground springs and we'll come up with ways to get rid of sewage because I'm not sending sewage waste to any body of water. Everything that I'm doing will be at no cost to my people in any way whatsoever. I'm just playing my part in God's grand scheme of things. So if you like this idea and would like to play a part too, I would definitely appreciate donations when we get this project up and running. Because this idea isn't a for-profit business. So I'm not receiving any money from tenants as if I'm renting out properties to renters. Your donations will help with establishing a facility in Africa as well as training and paying African workers to melt down form and erecting the homes out there. It'll be cost effective and time efficient to have a facility out there than it would be to create the parts here and send the parts there. So let's get together on this.